Alright guys, third and final tutorial in this mini-series. And let's go ahead and get rid of all this crap right here because we are only interested in the view did load method. Now, in the last tutorial, what we did is we saved all that data that we needed or any data that we needed into a file. But we're saying, alright, it would be kind of useless if it's just chilling there in a file. What we need to do when we start up our program is extract that data from the file and use it in one way or another. So the cool thing about this is there's a method already built in to when your application starts up. Every time your application starts up, a method called view did load gets called. And what this method is going to do is whatever you want it to do. So let's go ahead and override this and uh you know make it do what we want it to do so let's go ahead and first get a path door file so ns string um, I'm just gonna name it file path and go ahead and set it equal to self path of file so I mean we used it right here right here do you guys see the usefulness of having an own separate method I mean check this out instead of having to write all this code once and then twice again we just called it right here and right here but anyways I'm rambling <laughs> I apologize so now we have a path to our file so now we need to make an if statement and we need to check if the file exists and we do this with ns file manager default manager file exists at path file path so we're pretty much checking if my file dot p list is even existing and here is why we need to check if it even exists first because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be grabbing the data from it and trying to plug it into our text field but if there's not even a file there at all and if you're saying alright why would there not be a file there if this is your very first time running this app um, of course as soon as you load your program there's not going to be a file yet because it didn't even run the code to create it so it's going to try to look for a file and try to extract data from it that isn't there so that's why you need to make sure that the file is there before it starts getting data from it so anyways if the file exists and any time aside from your first opening time running this app this is going to be true so what we want to do if the file exists is create an array NS array name it array like any other one and go ahead and set this equal to NS array allocate some space in it with contents of you almost got their Xcode file now what file file path there we go right there and now what we want to do is remember this file is pretty much an array and the information we want from this array is in the first object I mean we covered this in the last story so what we want to do is in our field I mean I'm just putting it in my tech uh, what's it called text field but you can put it on a label you can just print it out on a screen or anywhere you want but what I'm going to be doing is taking the first object from this array which is a string at object 0 and I'm going to be putting it in our text field right here so now whatever was the last thing we typed in our text field is now going to get loaded into our text field and after this we need to go ahead and of course release our array why not and so you're saying alright we're done well, not quite. We need to do one more little thing. See, there's kind of a weird thing here. You don't really need to understand what's going on. But anyways, we're going to be working with something called notifications. And we actually need to be, we actually need to register to be notified. Um, Well, I'll show you guys what's, I'll type the code for it. UI application, there we go. And just name this app or something and get UI application shared application and this is pretty much our application itself and what we need to do is in this code um, go to NS notification center there we go 
default center add observer. I just wait for it to type it for me. All right, add observer self, which is this class for key path. Um, yeah, we don't want any of that. What's this method right here? It gave me the wrong method. It gave me the wrong parameters at least. All right, put a semicolon right there, and yeah, so get rid of all these parameters. Um, add observer self. That's good. All right, now for selector, evidently we're going to build this ourselves. At selector, this is the method that you want to get called. Application will terminate. There we go. Now it started typing in some stuff for us. So I actually have this copied over here because let me just go ahead and do this and I'll talk you guys through it. Again, anything that uh is in our you know what's called. Don't worry about it. But anyways, what we need to do is we need to register to be notified anytime you know what? Back to the other thing. You don't need to understand how our microwave works in order to use a microwave. But anyways, these have to do with uh, notifications. Notifications are pretty much how objects talk to each other. And what you need to understand is this pretty much is the method that you want to call. You know, don't even worry about it. Just remember to add this code. And here's what I'm going to do. Whenever we go over notifications, I'm going to tell you guys about it. That would make a lot more sense instead of throwing everything at you at once. So, anyways, let's go ahead and build this tutorial, and uh, you know, maybe if I have time to talk you guys through this instead of my ramble on. So now we have an empty text field, and now let's go ahead and add some text called bacon. Now let's go ahead and close our program. Go ahead and close, and when we close our program, this application will term terminate notification will be called, and hence application will terminate that method is going to be called. So now whenever we say we need to go ahead play another game, go ahead and play chicken bounce, play, here's a little game I'm working on. Chicken bounce, chicken bounce, bounce chicken. All right, now I did that, came back, and check it out. Our bacon is still there. So we're saying, all right, how did this work? Well, what we did first is we called view did load. So it says, all right, the first thing I'm going to do is check if a file exists. It does. So now what I'm going to do is get the contents of that file and throw in my text field. So this is my text field. That's what happened. And now whenever we closed it like that, application will terminate. Terminate. Termites. No. Application will terminate gets called. And what this does is take whatever information is in that text field and stores it in your file. So then whenever you open it again, it will get updated. So check this out. Uh, if you want to change this to bacon, go ahead and change this to cheese, and go ahead and close that. Whenever you open it again, it'll be cheese. It's saving data to a file and then reading it again. So this is a pretty cool way that you can, you know, save high scores for games, user settings, and everything like that. So I hopefully, uh, hope this tutorial is in over 10 minutes. And again, like I said, notifications are a huge topic, way too confusing to tell you guys about, and you know five minutes so I'm gonna have to tell you guys about those later but anyways just go ahead and uh, include that code for now I promise I'll clear things up later and uh, yeah that's all I have for you for this tutorial so thank you guys for watching don't forget to download my app I'm super excited about it and uh, yeah I'll talk to you guys later see ya